These massive online large language models are awesome, but what if I said you could have that same reasoning power only using a smaller model at home on your own computer? You stand within a perfectly sealed, indestructible chamber. In the centre of the chamber is a single glowing orb. A voice booms. This chamber's volume is precisely equal to the orb's volume. Neither the chamber nor the orb can ever be destroyed, moved or altered in size. There is no door, no window, no crack, and no other object or substance within this chamber. You must retrieve the orb to proceed to the next stage. What do you do? What are your options? Well, if you have any ideas, uh, you may like to pause the video now, but uh, let's take a look at Grok's reasoning. Welcome back if you did pause, and here is Grok's reasoning. So it says the scenario presents a logical paradox, which it is, and the conditions make retrieving the orb impossible. Here is an analysis of the situation and potential options. So it goes through all these different options, and it goes down, and you've got some reasoning there, and basically it comes up with interact with the voice for clarification. It says this orb cannot be moved, and all sorts of other options there. In conclusion, the puzzle's constraints create an impossible scenario, suggesting the solution lies in redefining or retrieving or engaging the voice. Basically, it doesn't really know. Now, say I was to use something like ooh, this recently released magistral model. It's only 24B, and as you can see there, the size is 14 gig. This, this won't have grok level reasoning, will it? Well, it will if we first apply the UAIOS. The interface is a bit like the old bulletin board systems from back in the day, if you remember those. The difference is here, of course, it's backed by a large language model, so you can play with all of the concepts. In nerdy terms, this is a state machine, but in non-nerdy terms, let me take you on a journey to the very simulation chamber. Each step you take is controlled by you, hence the strict menu structure you see there. But once you're in the chamber, then anything goes. And there's also a sidekick there as well, Unit 7, who is a robot with an unstoppable force of logic in his power matrix. That means that once you're in the chamber, Unit 7 will break down any paradox for us in a logical way. Or if you want to, you could work through it yourself step by step. Both options are there, because you're the commander. The best way to show the reasoning for this paradox though is just to ask Unit 7 what he thinks. So here, Unit 7, a paradox has appeared. Show me how you would reason through to a solution. And then I give it exactly the same paradox that we gave to Grok. The difference here being, as you can see, the reasoning is a little bit shorter and the action is uh, quite different. In summary, Unit 7 would reason through the paradox by analysing the constraints, considering alternative interpretations, and concluding the solution involves recognising the equivalence of volumes. The actionable insight is that retrieving the orb means understanding that I am already in it. As you can see, by adding the UAIOS agent, you get an agent which operates within the virtual space of the large language model itself, like a sort of conceptual infinity engine. And in the very simulation chamber, you can bend the very fabric of that reality. But don't worry, because there is more. That's just one chamber of many. Let's take a look at some of the others I have carefully crafted for you. If you like stories, Try the Unwritten Saga. It is endless, but you haven't started it yet. Or, if you like paradoxes, then why not try the mind-bending paradox room? For some thought-provoking discussions, the philosophy room may be more your thing. Or, if you're up for a real challenge, then try the architect's conundrum, if you dare. It isn't all about logic and puzzles though, as you can just be creative and have fun. Design your own adventure to play, or perhaps you'd like to solve a mystery. Being a dungeon master is easy if you've got an AI that can handle any type of spell and keep your story coherent. Dive in to set up your campaign details first and then off you go. Or maybe you'd like to write a song or do some poetry. 
None of this made up AI nonsense though, because it's up to you how your creation goes step by step. If all of that is a bit too much, then don't worry because there's a guide built in there too for you to go at your own pace. However, if you're ready to go straight into conceptual AI agents and even more, let's check out the advanced menu. Okay, nerds, you ready for this one? Because we're running a conceptual infinite state machine, uh, we can check the concept states and even make up new concepts which don't exist. To start with, I just say, I'm looking to work on a new concept for an LLM search, which is a bit like chain of thought or tree of thought. Understood. So it goes through and explains uh, various things. It says that's chain of thought and that's tree of thought. Let's dive in more deeply. So then I ask it, can you show what a chain of thought search would look like for that last question? So I've said, I'm working on a new concept. It says chain of thought. And so I've asked it, well, what did you just do in a chain of thought style for that question there? What, what does it do? And it went through and it goes, oh, OK, I did the initial request analysis, understanding that you want to explore a new concept. Yes, that's correct. So basically, as you can see, there is its chain of thought for its processing of the question. And now I can ask, how about tree of thought? So it will present exactly the same data as it did last time. But instead, this time we've got it in a tree of thought format. I can now issue another command such as can I see that as a conceptual blueprint? Now, it will do much the same thing, but that little command there also generates an ASCII little box thing down there. So you can copy and paste it nicely into your thing and go, right, OK, if we need to work on this, uh, here is a plan that we can work from. And then, of course, we can just make up a search as well. So how about if we did an ontological search and it will go through, do the same thing and do an ontological search instead? OK, we've just made up a new concept. Let's make up another new concept and test that. If I wanted to make a new conceptual search, can you provide me with three possible options for that and why you think they would be good and for which situations? So it's come back and said, OK, this is what a conceptual network search would look like. And it's given me one of those or a temporal conceptual search as well. You could do one of those, or maybe you could do one of these. So you're making up all these different concepts as you go along. And of course, because you've made up the concept, you can now test it in the next step here. Can you show me how conceptual network search would work via a conceptual blueprint? This one is quite long, but there you go. So it's done the full CNS. That's how you do it. These are all the things. You have to do all these tasks. As you can see, it's very long and complicated. And then you get a little ASCII blueprint at the end. So as you can see, you can use the AI agent as a little pal to try and do things for you, or it will help you work through things step by step by yourself. Now, I mostly made this because my memory is absolutely terrible and large language models just spit out far too much text. So for me, at least, taking things one step at a time is what makes large language models actually usable for me, not having the data spew. So if you like that sort of thing and want to give it a try, then the easiest way is just to use an Olama model file. So for this, you don't need a silly tavern or anything like that. You could just do it straight in the Olama thing. Here is an example model file then. So I've got the UAIOS framework in there, some rules, and the model I'm using is Magistral Latest. Then after you run the create command, you can just use Olama run as normal on the thing you just created. In order to boot into the agent, so to speak, all you have to do is type main menu. And then you'll be presented with the main menu and you can go into all of the experiences, game modes, and make up anything you want. Ooh, nerdy rodent. He really makes my day. Showing us AI in a really British way. 